If you are watching this video, if you click to watch this video, and you're struggling with retroactive jealousy, chances are good that your partner's past that you're struggling with took place long before, or maybe shortly before, you knew each other. In other words, your partner's past took place before you were in the picture. However, for many other retroactive jealousy sufferers, it isn't so cut and dry. For many retroactive jealousy sufferers, their partner's past overlapped with their own presence in their partner's life. In other words, sometimes people get together, break up, get back together again, and it's a little bit more complicated in that situation. In today's video, I wanted to take a moment to respond to a viewer of this channel who is dealing with this situation, wants to know how to proceed in these somewhat difficult, somewhat more challenging circumstances. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome retroactive jealousy and save their relationships. If you would like more information about my work, you can visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. Okay, standard disclaimer for the people here for the first time, the term retroactive jealousy refers to unwanted intrusive thoughts, often obsessive curiosity, and what I like to call mental movies about your partner's past relationships and or sexual history. I'm gonna read the comment that I received that is inspiring this video. Comment writes, how do you get over your partner's past if you were boyfriend and girlfriend in college, each other's first, sorry, each other's first everything, then you broke up, you're still in love with each other, but you went on to live separate lives, then reconnected many years later. One partner had a whole lot of experiences and the other was in a long-term marriage and only had one other partner other than their college love. How do you deal with retroactive jealousy when you knew your partner before the past and then after? Okay, thank you, Mr. Anonymous Comment Writer. I always appreciate when you guys leave comments beneath these videos because they often inspire me to do this, <laughs> what I'm doing right now inspire me to speak about things that maybe I haven't spoken about before. So just to be absolutely clear, in case it was a little unclear, the person who wrote this comment was his partner's first everything, they broke up, and then many years later they got back together. And I think he's essentially wondering how retroactive jealousy is different in these circumstances. I wanna actually go back on something that I, I think I said at the beginning of this video that may not be entirely true. I think I said something like, you know, in these more difficult or more challenging circumstances. I'm not actually sure that overcoming retroactive jealousy is any more or less challenging if, you know, you knew your partner 30 years ago, then you broke up, then you got back together. As I often say, one of the great things about this issue of retroactive jealousy, and one of the things that I find really inspiring all these years later, is that the path to peace, the path to freedom, the path to liberation, from unwanted intrusive thoughts about your partner's past is much the same for everyone. Now I know, of course, everyone's different, everyone's story is a little different, and there's little tweaks and little adjustments that people have to make when they're working through this issue. However, the path to peace is pretty much the same for everyone. So all of the other content on my channel, all of my resources, free, paid, um, you know, on my website at redtrackofjealousy.com, all the free videos on this channel, God, hundreds, I don't know how many, most of that stuff will still be equally valid to you. It's not necessarily different just because you knew your partner when you were 14 or 15 or whatever, and you got back together in your, in your 50s. It's pretty much the same for everyone. That said, of course there are some differences here. Of course, it's a little bit more nuanced, perhaps. There's one thing that I think about when I encounter these situations, as I often do, when you were with your partner in the past, you broke up and you go back together again. And I believe I learned this from Esther Perel. Esther Perel is a Belgian psychotherapist. She wrote a wonderful book on long-term relationships called Mating in Captivity. I'm a big admirer of hers. I think her stuff is great. I think this is where I learned this from. Not sure, but I think so. And she basically said that when you break up with someone, then you get back together you really need to treat it psychologically as a new relationship. Now I realize I'm gonna have people saying, well, Zach, that's easier said than done. Well, welcome to life. <laughs> I mean, anything that's worthwhile is easier said than done, right? But the basic point is, it's, it's a more healthy way to process things if you're looking at it as a new relationship. And by the way, another, another thing that I think about a lot is uh, an American comedian named Louis C.K. has this great bit where he says, you know, no good relationship ever ended in a breakup or divorce. 
He says, if a great marriage broke up in divorce, that would be really sad. You know, it would be a bad time. But that has happened exactly zero times in history. So any breakup or divorce on some level is a cause for celebration because clearly there were problems there. It wasn't a great relationship. So regardless of why you broke up, you broke up for a reason, just like anyone in history who's ever been through a breakup. Breakups don't just happen. There's always some complicating factors. There's always a reason behind that. So if you got back together again, you know, regardless of whether you were in your 50s or your 20s or whatever, I think it's really wise and useful to start thinking about this like a new relationship. And if you can do that, if you can start telling yourself a new story about your relationship, which I'll come to in a moment, that should help you process a lot of the retroactive jealousy that you're dealing with right now. By the way, a little plug for me. I've been working on this issue for a long time. If you want to work with me, I've worked with many, many, many people in these circumstances. A lot of people who watch my videos on this channel apparently don't know that I offer one-to-one -one coaching on a limited basis these days, but I still do offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you'd like to work with me, if you'd like to book my time, click the link in the description of this video and I'll get back to you shortly. Okay, shameless plug out of the way. Coming back to this situation and the person who wrote the comment that inspired this, this video. Right now, you are telling yourself a story about your relationship. And one thing I've noticed is that a lot of people in your situation, where you're with your partner in the past, you broke up, then you go back together again, a lot of people in this situation tell themselves some version of, I wish we had just stayed together the whole time and everything would be perfect, right? As we covered a moment ago, no good relationship really ends in a breakup or divorce. So there were problems in the past, regardless of what kind of problems there were, there were clearly issues, there were clearly problems in the past that either you or your partner had to work through, right? And sometimes that can be highly logistical, like they've got to take a job in New York and you live in LA or whatever. Sometimes these can be highly logistical problems, but they're still problems, right? So I think it's a healthier way to look at things, reminding yourself that we broke up for a reason. Things wouldn't necessarily be so bliss and so heavenly if we had stayed up all this time. Couples break up for a reason, we broke up for a reason, and for whatever reason, our first relationship had to end. Now the obvious second part to this story that I think is a healthier way of looking at things, easier said than done, I know, but again, you know, what's your alternative? I think a better way to look at it is our relationship history, our history with each other is perfect. Things worked out exactly the way they should because of X, Y, and Z. I needed to learn all these things and have certain experiences, even if it was being in a bad marriage for 10 or 20 years. You know, that's what I needed to learn for whatever reason. I needed to have these experiences. My partner needed to have her experiences, whatever they were, however colorful or, or whatever they were. Ultimately, it's all perfect because it led you back together again. That's incredibly miraculous. 99.9 .9, you know, million nines after, most couples who break up don't find each other again. Certainly not with a long gap in between. You know, if you're apart for 10, 20, 30 years, it's extremely unlikely for couples to reunite after that. So what a miracle it is that you found each other now. So that's the key point here. Identify the story that you're telling yourself about your relationship, about maybe how it's not perfect and why couldn't we have just stayed together. Whatever it is, identify the story that you've been telling yourself exactly and then take the steps, take the time. You can journal, you can meditate, you can talk to someone like me, whatever. Take the time to come up with a new and better story and start internalizing that one. Obviously, there is a lot more to cover here. For anyone watching this who's struggling with retroactive jealousy, I recently re-recorded my free four-part video mini course. It includes some steps that will help you get started overcoming retroactive jealousy. If you would like access to that, click link in the description of this video. I think it's right near the top of the description. I'll send you my free mini course on getting started overcoming retroactive jealousy. You can unsubscribe anytime. I encourage you to check it out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you benefited from this video, please click the like button, leave a comment. Be sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you again soon.